As Sure as the Dawn. Prologue. A.D. 79. The guard of the lower dungeon threw the bolt and led the way. The sound of the Romans' hobnailed sandals sent Atreides back to Capua. As he followed the guard, the smell of cold stone and human fear made the sweat break out on his skin. Someone cried out from behind the locked door. Others moaned in despair. Then, as they kept walking, Atreides heard something coming from the far end of the dank environs, a sound so sweet that it drew him. Somewhere in the darkness, a woman was singing. The guard slowed, silting his head slightly. Have you ever heard a voice like that in all your life? He said. The singing stopped, and the guard walked more briskly. She'd been in here for months, yet it doesn't seem to affect her. Not like it does the others. A pity she's going to die with the rest of them tomorrow, he said. He paused before a heavy door, then threw the bolt. Atreides stood on the threshold and looked from face to face inside the dim room. A single torch flickered in the mount on the sidewall, but the huddled forms in the back were cast in shadows. Most of the prisoners were women and children. There were less than half a dozen old bearded men. Atreides wasn't surprised. Younger men would have been saved for fighting in the arena. Someone said his name and he saw a thin woman in rags rise from the mass of filthy captives. Hadassah. Is that the one? The guard said. Yes, the singer, he said. You there, come out. Atreides watched her as she picked her way across the room. People reached up to touch her. Some took her hand and she smiled and whispered a word of encouragement before she passed by. When she reached the open doorway, she peered up at him with luminous eyes. What are you doing here, Atreides? Unwilling to say anything in front of the Roman guard, he took her arm and drew her out into the corridor. The guard closed the door and set the bolt. He opened another door across the corridor and lit the torch, then went to stand at the end of the corridor. As Atreides followed Hadassah into the room the guard had opened, he listened to the sound of the hobnailed sandals on the stone and clenched his fist. He had vowed never to enter a place like this again, and yet here he was, and by his own choice. Hadassah turned to him and saw his torment. You must hate this place, she said softly. What brought you here to me? I've had a dream. I don't know what it means. She felt his desperation and prayed God would give her the answers he needed. Sit with me and tell me, she said, weak from confinement and days without food. I may not know the answers, but God does. I'm walking through blackness, a blackness so heavy I can feel it pressing against my body. All I can see are my hands. I walk for a long time, not feeling anything, searching for what seems forever, and then I see a sculptor, and before him is his work, a statue of me. It's like one of those they sell in the shops around the arena, only this one is so real it seems to breathe. The man takes a hammer, and I know what he's going to do. I cry out for him not to do it, but he strikes the image once, and it shatters into a million pieces. Shaking, Atreides rose. I feel pain, pain like I've never felt before. I can't move. Around me I see the forest of my homeland, and I'm sinking into the bog. Everyone is standing around me. My father, my mother, my wife, friends long dead. I cry out, but they all just stare at me as I'm being sucked down. The bog presses around me like the blackness. And then a man is there, holding out both hands to me. His palms are bleeding. Hadassah watched Atreides sink wearily down against the stone wall on the other side of the cell. Do you take his hand? she asked. I don't know, he said bleakly. I can't remember. You awaken? No, he breathed in slowly, struggling to keep his voice steady. Not yet. He shut his eyes and swallowed convulsively. I hear a baby crying. He's lying naked on the rocks by the sea. I see a wave coming in from the sea and know it'll sweep him away. I try to get to him, but the wave goes over him. Then I awaken. Hadassah closed her eyes. Atreides leaned his head back. So tell me, what does it all mean? Hadassah prayed to the Lord would give her wisdom. She sat for a long time, her head bowed. Then she raised her head again. I'm not a seer, she said. Only God can interpret dreams. But I do know certain things to be true, Atreides. What things? The man holding his hands out to you is Jesus. I told you how he died, nailed to a cross, and how he arose again. He's reaching out to you with both hands. Take hold and hang on. Your salvation is at hand. She hesitated. And the child? I know about the child. Atreides' face tautened with barely controlled emotion. She's my son. I thought about what you said to me that night when you came to the hills, when I told you to let the child die, that I did not care. He paused, then went on. I sent word that I wanted the child when it was born. 
Seeing Hadassah's startled look, Atreides stood abruptly and paced restlessly. At first it was to hurt Julia, to take her child from her. Then I truly wanted him. I decided I'd take the child and return to Germania. I waited, and then word came. The child was stillborn. Atreides gave a broken laugh, filled with bitterness. But she lied. The child wasn't stillborn. She ordered it left on the rocks to die. His voice choked with tears, and he raked his fingers through his hair. I told you if Julia laid him at my feet, I'd turn and walk away. And that's exactly what she did, isn't it? Placed him on the rocks and walked away. I hated her. I hated myself. God have mercy on me, you said once. God have mercy. Hadassah rose and went to him. Your son is alive. He stiffened and looked down at her. She put her hand on his arm. I didn't know you'd sent word you wanted him, Atreides. Had I known, I would have brought him directly to you. Please forgive me for the pain I've caused you. Her hand fell limply to her side. He took her arm. You said he's alive. Where is he? Hadassah prayed God would make right what she had done. I took your son to the Apostle John, and he placed him in the arms of Rizpa, a young widow who'd lost her child. She loved your son the minute she looked upon his face. His hand loosened and fell away from her. My son is alive, he said in wonder, and the burden of pain and guilt fell away from him. He closed his eyes in relief. My son is alive. His back against the stone wall, he slid down it, knees weakened by what she told him. My son is alive, he said in a choked voice. God is merciful, she said softly and lightly touched his hair. The light caress reminded Atreides of his mother. He took Hadassah's hand and held it against his cheek. Looking up at her, he saw again the bruises that marked her kind face, the thinness of her body beneath the ragged, dirty tunic. She had saved his son. How could he walk away and let her die? He stood, filled with purpose. I'll go to Sardis, he said. No. Yes, he countered, determined. Though he'd never fought lions, and knew there was little chance she would survive, he had to try. A word in the right ear, and I'll be in the arena as your champion. I have a champion already, Atreides. The battle is over. He's already won. She held his hand firmly between her own. Don't you see? If you went back into the arena now, you'd die without ever fully knowing the Lord. But what of you? Tomorrow she would face the lions. God's hand is in this, Atreides. His will be done. You'll die. Though he slay me, yet I will trust him, she said. She smiled up at him. Whatever happens is to God's good purpose and for his glory. I'm not afraid. Looking upon her, Atreides felt an aching hunger for a faith like hers, a faith that could give him peace. He searched her face for a long moment and then nodded, struggling against the emotions raging within him. It will be as you say. It will be as the Lord wills. I will never forget you. Nor I you, she said. She told him where to find the Apostle John, then laid her hand on his arm and looked at him, peace in her eyes. Now, go from this place of death and don't look back. She went out into the dark corridor and called to the guard. Atreides stood holding the torch as the guard came and unbolted the cell door. As he opened it, Hadassah turned and looked up at Atreides, and her eyes shone with warmth. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace, she said with a gentle smile. Turning away, she entered the cell. A soft murmuring of voices greeted her and the door was closed with a hard thud of finality.